it wouldn't be girl groups without who you were about to meet right now. Allow me to introduce Shelly White Clark, Kathy Merrick, and Ruth Smith, the honeycomb. <laughs> I am fangirling out right now. I want you to know this. This is awesome to me. This is absolutely awesome. I, it is such an honor to have each of you here. And I am, when I, when I said that there would be no female empowerment groups, with, when you guys have lyrics, and I wrote down some of my favorite lyrics. Oh, <laughs> yes, baby, yes, baby. My love, you can, while you are out looking for sugar, <laughs> somebody <laughs> is going to take your honey and be gone. Do you hear that, man? Do you hear that, man? They just told me that this is this is spitting some truth right here. Yeah, with the neck and all of that. Then one monkey. Don't stop no show. <laughs> don't stop no show. It's right. If, if you don't want to go, there are a lot of guys out there who would love to play your role. When I tell you, it doesn't get any better than that. You can, you can get, if you don't love me, you can go. Bye. There's somebody or there's another one out there. Bye. 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 <laughs> That's part of our choreography. That's right. That's right. Bye. But don't let the door hit you on the way out. Don't let it hit you on the way out. I am so happy to have each of you here. This is an honor. And I will say that um, we are missing one of our lovelies, Miss Edna Wright. Um, I have known Edna since I was 12 years old when I started singing with Andre and Sandra Crouch. And I had no idea. That's the best part about it. I had no idea that she was in the group singing the songs that I would love to listen to that I grew up listen, listening to. And it is, I had a list of everyone. When I started this platform, I had a list of everyone that I wanted to interview. And you guys are on that list. Oh, and um, I have to shout out Melody, um, Edna's daughter. Um, this yes. is just, you know, this is everything to me. So let's begin our talk with these beautiful women. Um, the Honeycombs began. I want to hear the story of Miss Shelley. Um, you were one of the founding members, and I want to hear the story of how the Honeycombs came about. I was in a group with the uh, sought after soprano Carolyn Wills, mm -hmm. and our, our group was with uh, a legendary L.A. singer named Shirley Matthews. Uh -huh. If you Google her, yeah. uh, you, you won't be able to read everything about Shirley. She put a group together and called it uh, Willis, Matthews, and Clark. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were just performing around L.A. doing uh, sessions, uh, you know, for different producers and performing and uh Unbeknownst to me, Carolyn was also doing sessions with Edna, who I didn't know. Uh -huh. And so when the time presented itself, just long story short, and the sister, of course, we all know is Darlene Love. So when Darlene Love, you know, the Blossoms did everything under the sun. Mm -hmm. They were triple booked all the time. Yeah. So, so a show came to them that they were unable to do. And it was the Andy Williams of... Uh, special featuring Burt Bacharach, Dionne Warwick, some other, and they needed a group to sing behind everybody. Andy Williams, Dion, and I forget who else was on the show. So uh, Ed, Edna called Carolyn and said, my sister can't do the Andy Williams uh, special. Will you do it with me? And she said, yes. And Edna said, well, can you find one more girl? Otherwise we can use someone I know. And Carolyn said, no, I'm already singing with a girl. Let me bring her name is Shelly. So I met Edna on the set of the Andy Williams special. And I didn't know that Edward Holland was watching us that evening at the urging of Edna to, uh, they wanted to sign her as a solo and she didn't want to be a solo. So uh, she said, I want to be in a group. If you like the group you see on TV tonight, uh, Eddie and Brian, let me know and you can sign me with them. So that's how it happened. And I didn't know that he was watching. All I knew was that it was a, a gig, you know, 
it was great. Uh, you know, Andy Williams is a, is a, a, an amazing. I just watched. Uh, you know, it's on YouTube. I just right, watched the right, right. It's amazing, and I said, "Wow, look at us with our <laughs> young skills there." Uh, but then that's how we were, we were formed. Edward said, "I love this group. Y'all come to Detroit." Uh, they went. I was a bit of a holdout, but they wore me down, and eventually I went to Detroit. <laughs> <with Niles. laughs> and then from there, um, and you guys, I mean, you have the chart popping hits. The first one was um, while you were out looking for sugar. Right. My, my, this is my motto. Why are you out looking for sugar? So, <laughs> now, who wrote that? Uh, uh, our songwriters uh, range from Greg Perry, which, Perry? of course, was uh, and his uh, boyfriend at the time. Uh-huh. Uh, Angelo Bond, which was a little prince-looking guy. Uh, <laughs> he would do a lot of the lyrics. Mm-hmm. General Johnson, who, of course, is with the chairman of the board. Right. right? Groups, right. um, and and we had Ronald Dunbar. We had uh, they were young writers, which is why they would have these innovative lyrics. You know, all of our songs are sort of in your face, right? You know, That's what I, I love you know, about it. Think, think about. I mean, I I don't know that we have one. Yeah, I guess we do have a few that talk about you know we're in love and positivity. Most of them are telling you know the men, and I think. These writers were saying, if I was a woman mm-hmm. uh, and I had a message, what would I say? Uh-huh. So they, they were thinking for women at the time. And I think that's why, um, you know, one has all those records with such big hits because they were they were great songwriters and they thought ahead. They were ahead of themselves and they were young, too. Mm-hmm. They weren't afraid to take chances. Right. Know? And that is interesting because when um, cause I had read that, you know, that um, the songwriters were men. And I was like, that's so interesting to have the, the lyrics that, and they relate to every year, every woman, um, every person who was in a relationship would like that. Um, right. So to find out that these are men who are in, so they know what women are looking yeah. for, okay? <laughs> and, and, they were, and they were younger. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. I don't think any of them were in their 40s. They were all 30s and 20s. And um, uh, probably Edward and Brian may have been the uh, most senior age-wise, mm-hmm. uh, the owners of, and Lamont Dozier. They they may have been the oldest. Yeah, the Holland Dozier Holland. That That's is right. awesome. And you guys were on Hot Wax Records. Ain't that something. <laughs> <laughs> and then our, our sister label, of course, was Invictus, and I believe it was Street of Pain over there. Mm-hmm. Uh, which we knew casually. Her sister, Sherry Payne, was there. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Sherry was with the Glass House. A Hundred Proof was there. Mm-hmm. Chairman of the Board was there. The Flaming Embers, these white boys that could sing you under the table. Yep. Uh, they were the first sort of average white band. Um, they were great. We also um, had uh, Laura Lee. Really? There. Yep. We had, we had her. We had, uh, and for a while, we had George Clinton and the Parliament Funkadelic. Whoa, do you oh, know? I was yeah. stunned to find out that George Clinton, um, him and the Pompadour, um, because we're so used to seeing them with the dreads and, you know, the multicolored dreads and doing the punk music to find out that he was um, really singing and with a, a, a quartet, if I'm not mistaken. And I saw pictures of him from that time and I was just amazed. I'm like, how did this happen? Um, so he had, he had, he wrote a song undercover. Uh, we're not supposed to know it was from him, but he wrote a song that, uh, the uh, angels here of love, love called uh, When Will It End? And he inspired that song. I mean, uh, and sitting on a time bomb. Uh, mm-hmm. and so we were thinking of putting sitting on a time bomb in our show because that would be amazing. Yeah. That would be amazing. Now take me through. I want, I want to hear. How, because you, um, from how you met Miss Kathy and Miss Wendy, mm-hmm. I want to hear how, because I know that when um, Miss Carolyn left the group, and so you went through that change, right? Like, then you met the two newest members. So I want to hear about that. Uh, I we tried to reunite again, 
uh, with Edna and her daughter, as you know, Melody, and we were able to do maybe five, six, seven engagements, one being the Soul Train Cruise. And uh, when we came back, I just felt that we needed a fresher, I felt like I needed needed a a fresher type of situation to be in. Mm -hmm. So uh, I gradually uh, left that situation, but I told Kathy, well, I'll let Kathy tell it because okay. it was, Miss Kathy, come we, were, on now. we were at dinner. We were at dinner. Uh, Shelly and Herdine were having a birthday dinner. You know, their birthdays are a couple of days apart. Right. One, one day, one day. Right. So we were uh, at dinner and I was sitting next to Shelly. We just started talking and uh, she said, casually, we should put a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. She said, no, no, I'm serious. I said, me too. <laughs> so uh, I mean, the next day she called me and said, hey, do you know anybody? And, and I said, as a matter of fact, I do. I was on the road in, in uh, New Zealand and Wendy happened to be in New Zealand with the Glenn Miller band the day before uh, the gig that I did there. Um, and she left us a note. So she was fresh on my mind. <laughs> Ellie said, you know any girls? I said, yes, I have the perfect girl for you. <laughs> uh-huh. Y'all met for lunch to uh, talk about it and we clicked. And- Absolutely amazing. And let me tell you something, Miss Kathy. Now, aren't you Miss um, Ballet Dancer, Miss <laughs> DC? Yeah, Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. Okay. I, look, I'm from a musical family, and I, I love music, and I, I call myself a closet singer. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I started off at eight as a, a dancer, and I studied dance for years, but in the interim, I'd say around 15 or 14, my uh, teacher heard me singing, and she uh, would do these musicals every Christmas. Mm-hmm. And so Ended up giving me a lead part, and from that, my mom found out I could sing. <laughs> uh-huh. mm-hmm. I had no idea. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wait, were you were you hiding in the closet singing? <laughs> <laughs> they get me to sing. They they had jam sessions downstairs in the den, and my brother he was a guitar player, and my mom sang. She, so she was a singer. So she had all of us singing, but couldn't get me to sing. I would just sit there and listen. <laughs> oh my God. In, the, in my bedroom, close the door. That's when wait, I. Wait, you know who was like that? I'm, I'm hearing recently was Frida Payne. Remember on on the show that day, uh, her sister Sherry gave up all that information, and she said that Frida would go behind the curtain and hide, and she wouldn't sing. And she would hide behind the curtain. Oh, and, uh, and Sherry said, I'd be out there singing. And then, come on, Frida. No, no, hide behind the curtain. So she's, <laughs> she's uh, you know, but then, but then like you, Kathy, when they, uh, uh, you know, when she felt she could sing and be comfortable, then you couldn't shut her up, you know. Late. <laughs> <laughs> I was totally and, and then how did you get to get, okay, from that, being afraid? To perform to Miss DC. Well, it's funny because my dance teacher, uh, Laverne Reed, he had a lot of influence in the city. Um, he worked for the Department of Recreation, mm-hmm. and so, which is you know government city. And the mayor, he would uh, uh, have us do these shows every year, and also every summer we would dance throughout the city. Well, uh, we were sort of well-known dance company, and the um, pageant contacted Laverne and asked her if she would be a choreographer. So when she got involved, she said, you know what, Kathy, you should do this. And of course, I was like, no way, no way. No way. <laughs> but all, the girl, all my girls, my dance sisters, they were backing me and, and said, you should really do this. So I said, okay. Because they were going to be there. They were going to be part of the um, entertainment. Okay. Okay. So they, they were the opening. The dancers were the opening. Okay. So, so I felt comfortable doing it. Didn't think I was going to win. Didn't even care. 
I mean, you know, I wasn't really thinking that way. I said, okay, right. this, it'll be an experience. And when I did, oh, but let me go back. I forgot about this. You know, and as, as we do these things, I, I remember things that I just totally, I was in a pageant when I was 14, 13. Uh-huh. Uh, Miss DC Teenage Pageant. And I forgot how I got involved with that. But me and my girlfriend, and uh, I met this one other girl that to this day I'm still friends with her. But I did that. I lost. So I was like, you know. I, Wait a minute, you lost? <laughs> I mean, you know, I didn't play. So <laughs> it was chalked up as an experience. Mm-hmm. But during that time, I uh, was asked a question and I froze. So when the other pageant came around, I was petrified of the question. Because, you know, I I had that bad experience, so I really didn't want to be in pageants anymore, but because they pushed me and urged me to do it. Right. But uh, during the pageant, they asked the question, but they asked me the wrong question. They were supposed to ask me about music Mm -hmm. and about business. So I corrected them. Which I guess came off as confident. <laughs> right? You stood up for yourself. Hey, come on now. <laughs> um, between that and, and my piece, I won. <laughs> there you go. Okay. And what was it like when you heard your name being announced as the winner? Oh, I was I was flabbergasted. I was surprised. <laughs> Miss Closet Singer. Miss uh, Afraid to Win now is known as you are representing DC. You are most beautiful <laughs> of DC. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> funny thing is, my boyfriend was in the audience, so I, I felt like, yeah, okay. <laughs> That's right. So I'm that- officially the prize. You, you officially are the prize. Come on now. <laughs> That is awesome. Now, Miss Wendy, Miss um, yeah. Miss how are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. I am Sitting here listening to all of this stuff. There are little things that I hadn't hadn't heard before, you know. So it's always good. There's a lot of stories between the three of us. It's like, what? I didn't know. You didn't tell me that, girl. No. <laughs> but everything is good. I'm well, thank you. I'm so excited. You are truly, the three of you are truly one of the best looking groups I have ever seen. Oh, oh my God. I mean, hats off to <laughs> Thank you. you. Said, whatever you guys are doing, please, please thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I thought there was a time I, you know, I know Kathy from way back. And I remember seeing her for the first time, and I can't remember where we met. Kathy, I wish I could remember that. But I promise you, when I saw her, I said, she has got to be the most beautiful woman I have ever seen. She's stunning. Mm-hmm. Stunning, stunning. Mm-hmm. And just, you know, just as beautiful inside as she is out. And she still is. I mean, look at her. So, Miss DC. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah, right. right. Wonderful. Now, you were a Ray Lip. You sang with uh, Rachel. Ah. I did, yeah. I was a Raylet, but I didn't let Ray. Hmm. Oh, I know. <laughs> you know, I heard the story. No, I heard the story. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you guys something. Doing this, and you know, and all my, like I said, I've been doing, you know, I've been singing, and, and, and it's so funny, Miss Kathy. I'm a closet singer as well. I am, I have stage fright. Uh-huh. I, I, I'm terrified, but you get me if I'm a, around someone that I really know. And, you know, we're just grooving and singing along. I hit the notes. And sometimes I was surprised. I'm like, oh, I didn't know that was in me. You know, so uh-huh. <laughs> it is hilarious to know. But I have, like I said, I'm a fangirl. And I'm, I'm music. Music is in my blood. So I have, you know, I've been around. Oh, not been around in that sense. Um, but I have been around a lot of artists. And I have heard and seen a lot of things. And there are some interviews that I have to edit because I get to talking with, you know, with people who I really know. And we get to sharing them stories. And I go like, oh, I can't let that be known. So I know you have some stories, Miss Wendy. So when you said, uh, you know, about the Raylets, I, I already know. 
So. <laughs> Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Well, I, yeah. Well, I'll tell you. I, I remember the first. This thing, I thought this this can't be happening, but it was one of the first um, first gigs that I had, and I think we were up near San Francisco or someplace, and uh, it was an old theater. I wish I could remember it, but it was an old theater up there, um, and we're standing back. You know, Ray would sit. You know, stage right. And what was he? He would he would he would be over there. And so the Raymets would stand a little further back. And so whenever he would he would start, uh, I can't stop loving you. Mm-hmm. We we were supposed to walk up, take like about three steps up to the microphone. We all all two of microphones with five girls. We were like had to get in there, right? Mm-hmm. So we're standing back here. We had our gowns our little spiky heels. And so the part was coming up where we had to move. And I went to move my foot, you know, just to get ready to move. And I, Stella, which was the main head ringlet in charge, I said, Stella, my shoe is stuck in the crack. <laughs> and, and she said, step out of it. So... I stepped out of it and walked up just in time. I left that shoe back there. No, I, don't oh know if, <laughs> I don't know if anybody saw it or not. Thank yeah. God for gowns, right? But I stepped out of it and I stayed tippy toe on that one shoe. I know. And sung, I can't stop loving you with one shoe on. I said, I don't know. This is the beginning of something crazy. It was. <laughs> it was the best, worst gig of my life. I was staying like that. <laughs> And I'd do it again. I really would. I would do it all over again. You And aside from the relets, I know that you were with the Glenn Miller Orchestra as well. Yes, please, I was. We sure did. Wow. Um, well, um, I played in uh, big bands for, I don't know, for a while, uh, uh, for, um, you know, these casual offices. Mm-hmm. Whenever they'd have a, uh, an orchestra or something, and they had... Um, a, a big band needed for any type of gig, most times they would call me. Uh, and it was because the guy that had all of the charts uh, would show up with the charts for these bands. So um, he'd say, you know, I really, really like your voice. Um, he used to compare me to Karen Carpenter. He says, your voice is just really pure and just, you know, not too anything, you know, because I didn't start out as a singer either. So I just would sing the melody and no tricks. I couldn't do that stuff, you know. Um, and so they would call me and then he said that he had just acquired um, um, the OK from the Glen Miller estate to start a West Coast um, chapter. They already had an East, to- East Coast chapter. And so he started the West Coast chapter and asked me if I would be interested. And I thought, yeah. So the East Coast chapter uh, is based in Florida, and they do the road trip across um, the USA. The West Coast would always do uh, international. So I was like, yes, I am available. So we did that for about 15 years, and um, I was the first Black person to be on that stage with Glen Miller Orchestra. So, yeah, yeah. That's, that's um, amazing. Yeah. And you were also in a group called Harmony, correct? Yes, how did you know that? Oh, <laughs> you know my <laughs> my life. <laughs> yeah, Harmony um, is a group of amazing uh, women. I, I love them. They're uh, two of my best friends, uh, Teresa Walker and Sydney Davis. And uh, we started out singing uh, the the sounds of the Marvelettes. Mm-hmm. But I just answered an ad in the Music Connection in L.A. and it, you know. I'm thinking, I don't know, I um, I need to work. So let me see what's in here. And I wouldn't audition. And I had my Converse all stars on and, you know, my jeans. And um, and I went in there and I was so green. I went in and they were dialed up. And, you know, I thought that's my first lesson. Show up, look at sharp. And I just had on jeans and a T-shirt and stuff. But I got the part. Because right. I don't know, I guess that's they saw right. something in me. Um, the the um, the company that was hiring this group, and so we became good friends, and then we just started doing a lot of 
uh, session work, he did a lot of stuff for Ray Parker um, back when he had his studio, um, what, American, I think it was, um, out in North Hollywood. We used to do a lot of sessions for him, um, uh, connected through one of the Dozier brothers, um, Reggie Dozier, who is a brother of mm-hmm. Lamont. And so, and then from that, I started getting um, sessions uh, for Lamont, doing voiceovers for him. But Sydney and Teresa and I, we call ourselves Harmony, and we just did a whole bunch of um, casuals in town, a lot of, um, we toured uh, Asia, you know, that sort of stuff with um, uh, John Daniels from Mavericks Black. Um, Yeah, so um, again, they're just two of my best friends, and I... I feel like I learned to sing being uh, close to them. Really? So, yeah. That's a great Because I wasn't singing before. Yeah. I, really? I never sung before them. Really? Yeah. Isn't that something? And then now see that you, you, each one of you, like Miss Kathy said that, you know, you were a closet singer. And Miss um, Wendy, you you know, you were afraid to sing. And then you get with Miss Shelly oh. and then you become the honeycomb. <laughs> Well, I've never been afraid. I don't know. I just didn't think I would be singing because I moved to L.A. as a flautist. Um, I went to be in the orchestra there and I wasn't ever going to sing. That wasn't my thing. I, I didn't know that I could. But, you know, I met these women and I started singing and um, I don't know, just learned to stand on my two feet with being able to solo on my own and, and you know, got that confidence. So. And I met these two women, and yay, here we are. Before that, <laughs> wait a minute, let me take, let's go back a little bit as well. You also oh. are the recipient of two NAACP awards. Yay, you do know some stuff. I know my stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that was most most recent, um, what was it? I, I want to say... <laughs> A little over a year ago, was it? Oh, this COVID messed my my timing up. I know. I should I should know this by heart, but um, I don't know. I I like to do. Um, I like to um, um, to offer my my um, services, if, if you will, you know, musically to to children, whatever I can do. If somebody calls me to do something, I'm not going to ask for uh, money to do something for children, you know, or for the elderly, or um, if, if somebody, I, I'm that girl, call right. me and I will, you know, that's my tie, if right. you will. Um, and uh, uh, all I can say is somebody noticed mm-hmm. and um, and uh, I was offered um, that award for giving. As as well as you should have been offered that award. That's amazing. I shouldn't you you won that award fair and square. Come on now. It was thank you earnestly. So uh, that's off to you. Um, Miss Kathy, this is something I've been dying to ask you. The little girl in me had a crush on Mr. Tom Jones. Oh well, you know, I never sang for Tom Jones, but I sang on his albums. Uh I, I would bat to if I had met him. <laughs> My mother was a huge Tom Jones fan, so you know, Tom Jones was always played in our house. Uh-huh. But I got to sing on his album, but I never met him, never toured with him. I know that there's some information out in the what is that, the internet world. Right. right. Yeah, but that's misinformation. Okay, but I do know you, you toured with Boss Garrett. Yes, and that uh, it was the Tom Jones recordings that got us that job because really? the guy who was producing uh, the record, mm-hmm. you know, heard us sing. We, we sang on two of the songs, He's, and he called Boz and he said, "Hey, I found the two girls you need." Because he was on hiatus for a minute. Bob. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness! Yeah. He was trying to put his band together, and so this producer said, hey, I got the two girls. Uh, so we went, didn't have to audition, we just got the gig. And uh, ironically, well, not ironically, but I was pregnant. Really? <laughs> and, oh. and I never told him. I was four months pregnant. I didn't tell him because I really needed the job, and I had to pay my rent. <laughs> But if I told him, I knew he would. He wasn't going to hire me. 
Really? Well, I feel kind of guilty for doing that because it's sort of um, disingenuous, but you know, I, I a job and you need it and you were there and you were there when you were supposed to be. Because right. You were also a member of Shades of Lace. Well, uh, that was after Shades of Lace that we did Boz. Um, we lost our record deal. We ended up working with different artists. We toured with Johnny Gill and uh, I ended up working with uh, James Ingram and mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, Boz. Sheena Easton? Never worked with Sheena Easton. That's Wendy. That's another, oh, that's right. Okay, I'm sorry. Me. <laughs> um, and then um, from there, when you and how did you meet um, Miss Shelley to become a, a part of Honeycomb? Well, my husband became a member of Earth Wind and Fire, so naturally, uh, <laughs> here, you know, I'd see I call it Earth Wind and Fire family, right? You know, you know, whenever they're working close by, if they're in in L.A. or Vegas, uh, every place except for the East Coast, I'd try to come out to the gigs. And of course, Shelly's always there with Verdine. So, <laughs> right, right, right. Clicking and bonding and the dinner happened. And that's how we... Right, that's right. And then Miss Shelly, Miss Shelly, now you were a child star. I mean, you were a child performer. You and your brother, Ilya. Um, that, Ooh, you said his name right. Oh, there goes for you. Oh, my goodness. That was going to be one of my, my son was going to be named Ilya. But I chose Christian instead. <laughs> so I love the name. Okay, but why Ilya? It was a name. You the man from Uncle. Remember the. <laughs> I was a Natchkin kid. That's all. I had music, television. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I watched all those shows. And so that was the name. So, um, yes. Ilya, Ilya Kiryakin. Yes, yes. But yes, my, my yes. mother, uh, it was a Russian Jew and pretty much sort of like a communist. Mm-hmm. And one of her uh, heroes and and in a way, um, liter- a literature mentor was Ilya Ehrenberg, a Russian oh. Jew who was a communist who wrote poems and, um, and lots of different works, documentaries, that kind of thing. And she was basically in love with his style of writing. And um, it was a very different name at the time because what black kids are going to be named Ilya anything or um, I couldn't even say it. Neither could any of his uh, really? roommates. I used to call him Yuya yeah. when I was little. Yeah. And yeah. Um, eventually he got tired of people mispronouncing or, you know, the teacher. Hello, hello, is uh, uh, Isla here? Is uh, where, where is she? And that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, he was like, you know, no more. He changed it for a short period to Eddie. Like my, oh. father. my father was Eddie. So he took my, uh, so we they you know, started Eddie Jr. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then and as he got older, he realized what a cool name Ilya was. And he changed back to Ilya again. A lot of people were still calling him Eddie and he then had to correct. But, um, but yeah, but it, Eddie, uh, Ilya's a real cool name. I, I've always liked it. Yes, it really is. And you were on the Cotton Club Review, correct? Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, we... Um, it, it was a great show. I mean, they, I think they found me being, from being on Broadway. And um, I went to audition and uh, they loved me. And they told my father, you know, we love her. And the person who didn't love me was Cab Calloway. And really pitched a bitch and really? said, no, uh, I want my daughter to have it. And she was like a lightweight singer, but she, couldn't really stay on key and she wasn't the dancer that they wanted because the guy that was producing this named Clarence, I forget his last name, but he was doing all the stuff back in the day. You've seen those black and white movies with the Nicholas Brothers. Right, right. And I mean, this guy was heavy duty, so he knew what he was looking for. So I had to sing and dance and act and pass every test. And so they told Cab, and they didn't you know, mince any bones with him. They said, no, we're not going to do that. Uh, we're hiring this little girl. And so what, what happened was Cab, who people know is a tremendous drinker and an alcoholic, mm-hmm. um, was angry every day 
when I was on tour with him for seven months. I mean, he would do nasty things like bump into me because we crossed each other backstage or something like that. And then at one point, it got really bad. I did a, like a number in the middle and a closing number with him, and he figured he would fix me. And he took the microphone cord and pretended he was playing a game, and he was really trying to wrap it around my uh, feet so no. that I would trip and fall on stage. Wow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got to deal with all this sh- at seven years old. You guys, come on. Come on. Get this guy away from me. <laughs> so wow. I would come off stage and tell my mother, my, they would take turns coming out to the road. Sometimes it was her, then they would switch to make sure I got enough time with each parent. And then the other would go be with my brother who was doing movies. Um, uh, but so Cab was just, he was just the meanest thing under the sun. And I think toward the very end of the tour, he started to try to get nice. But by then I was terrified of him. What? Tried to stay out of his yeah. way. And that was my experience with touring seven months with, with uh, this guy that wanted to take my head off. Oh, and right. and uh, people would say, oh, she's so cute. Is she your daughter? And so a lot of times I would try to appease him and I'd go, yes. <laughs> wow, I didn't know any of this stuff, Shelly. Wow. Uh, you know, uh, girl, the things you deal with. And, and then, of course, it was the chorus girls. And these women were out there on the road seven months with nobody. Uh, they didn't have, a lot of them didn't have kids because when you're working, you know what that's mm-hmm. like. And they couldn't keep a boyfriend, so they were lonely in that respect. So all of a sudden, a little girl is on tour, and each one of them wanted to adopt me or wanted me to be. And so backstage, they would have these horrible cat fights. Like, really? Oh, like, and then finally, this one uh, that was uh, like, a, like a little mentor to me, and her name was Dee. And she came to me and she said, Shelly, I hate to put this, lay this on you, but if you want to get along with all of us, you have to make sure when you come backstage, you spend a little time. I mean, it was like 20 of them. A little time with each one of us. <laughs> Sit down and say, hi, Florence. Hi, how are you? Blah, blah, blah. No. Go and sit with the next one. These girls were trying to scratch each other's eyes out that because of me. Oh and so God. I understood. The, I didn't understand everything, but I understood the psyche that they were lonely, that they right. wanted a child, that they right. found, uh, you know, solace in, in a little girl who, you know, could have been theirs or something like that. So mm-hmm. I learned real quick uh, the ways of the world. And okay. you went right. from Mr. Mean Old Man to the women. Everybody was wanting the piece of you, and you're just, you haven't even made it to 10 yet. So you're <laughs> Right. I'm like seven, eight years old, but I figured it out because, you know, when, you, when you're that young and you just want things to go right, you think fast and you think on your feet. Because I had a father who was the original Joe Jackson and okay. he was not, you could not play with him, okay? Yeah. He was uh, straight out of uh, the West Indies. Yeah. He could dance, act, whistle, uh, sing. He could do all that stuff so he would not take uh, half you half-assing what he gave you to do. And so I noticed every time he came out on the road, my whole routine would be changed around because he would say, you're not doing enough. Come back, come on, we're going to change your routine. So then Cab would be mad at that because he was thinking, this little girl's trying to upstage me. Really? <laughs> and so my oh, was really oh, oh, my Lord. That was traumatizing. Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if people wonder why I'm half crazy today. Oh, but, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> still, look, you got to learn it. And, uh, you know, a, a real performer, you just figure it out. Right. That's all, that's all any of us do. Right. You know? uh, we have to just figure it out. Mm-hmm. I mean, this industry mm-hmm. is the best and the worst. Yeah. All yes. at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. so. You yes. can't get too comfortable. I mean, my mother was a Russian Jew, but she did tell me, it's great you can sing and dance, but damn it, you better think of some other things that you can do in, in addition, in addition right. to all that. So yeah. when I got to school, I learned how to type. I learned oh, attention. Yeah. I learned everything. <laughs> and you just aren't sure. Right. I had a long hiatus yeah. after Lane Cone right. uh, that I couldn't 
so, right. you know, something steady. So, I mean, I just went to work with whoever. I worked for Eddie Murphy. I started a management company. I just did outside stuff in addition to singing, which, you know, helped me with pay the bill. And it's one of the bills. The bill. yeah. <laughs> because, you know, I, you know, I work in the legal profession. Um, and I always, you know, I work in entertainment law. Um, mm. And a lot of actresses, especially women of color, who, if they, you know, the roles were small from the, you know, the 80s to the 90s, you know, they were very limited. And so a lot of my co-workers were also actresses. And it was, and it it would be amazing, especially, you know, like I told you, I was a latchkey kid. So I grew up watching Starsky and Hutch, you know, and the Edge of Night, you know, the soap operas and, and, you know, and all of these, you know, shows. And my coworkers would be in those shows. <laughs> you okay. know, Charlie Angels, you know, you know, all of those um, Dallas, Knox Landing, all of these shows, my coworkers would be in these shows and we would be talking about it. And I, I learned it because, you know, I would go, you know, my, most of my friends were, you know, you know, since I did work in entertainment, most of my friends were in entertainment, but during all that, when they weren't working on films or, or doing albums or whatever, they had to work. So it's, I'm glad to hear you say that, Michelle, because that is the God's honest truth. Yes. Right? It's the God's honest truth. You had to work. Right. <laughs> and what's your work, Michelle? You were an ICAC, weren't you? Yes. 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 I want to hear about that. Yes, that was, that was interesting. Um, uh, somehow or another, a woman named Ann Kane found me uh, when I was well, like right out of high school. And at the time, she was married to Otis Williams of The Temptations, yep. which I didn't know uh, all of that then. But she auditioned me in my home, uh, my apartment, and she said, oh, you're, you know, you're great. You're, you, you'll do great. Uh, and I said, OK, when do I fly out? And she said, tomorrow morning. I was like, whoa. Uh, and so, I, you know, I was excited. I flew out, I landed, checked in. Um, all of a sudden, you know, there's a, a, a knock at the door, bang at the door, and I there's I open the door, there's Ike. Oh. And, and I just came to welcome you. you know, uh, I can't, blah, blah, blah. And I said, oh, thank you. And, I, and he had all his bags with him. I said, what are, what are you doing all his bags? What are you saying? What are you saying? I'm spending the night here. Wait, 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 what? (laughs) And I said, you know, in my 18 year old naive self, I said, but aren't you married to Tina? And he said, yeah, uh, that ain't nothing. You know, I'm staying here tonight. I said, you know, look, they didn't tell me about this part. So right in front of him, I started packing and I said, I guess, you know, that, that's my, my I get days over. <laughs> and so he got scared and because they know that they needed somebody because they had a show. And so I guess he left me alone because he said, oh boy, I'm about to mess this up. And then right. I got to tend to somebody. So I, I looked out in that respect. He, he said, yeah, you're just a baby. And baby, baby. And he's, I guess he's trying to, you know, mm-hmm. make it right in his mind. Make yourself yeah. feel better about you. Yeah. <laughs> I said, okay, I'm the baby then. Okay, fine. Yeah. So he left. And the next day I saw, uh, I went into, you know, I was going down to rehearsal. The elevator opened up. It was stepped in there, Tina. And she said, oh, I've heard, uh, heard a lot about you. And I, I guess I told, maybe, maybe told her. I approached this uh, one girl and she didn't cooperate. Uh, but I think Tina liked that. Right. And uh, so she said, what sign are you? And I said, uh, I'm a Leo. Mm-hmm. And she said, oh, that's great. We're going to get along fine. <laughs> and we did from that time on. We went down to rehearsal. I had on all the wrong stuff. I didn't realize that their rehearsals were fast and furious. And it gets hot in there. I think I had on, it was cold. <laughs> so I had, on, I had on some wool clothing. I don't know what I had on, but I don't know. I uh, I learned the steps really quickly. She was happy about that. She made me stand next to her. We had the, the energy going on that side of the stage. And um, uh, the I guess at that time was a girl named Cheryl Williams. And of course, Ann Thomas, who went on to marry Ike later and mm-hmm. later on after mm-hmm. Tina left him. Mm-hmm. And they had uh, a daughter together. Uh, and at the time, uh, she was, she was, 
Tina's, they were always together. They were like sister wives. Uh-huh. And um, uh, she was the sweetest girl. Ann Thomas, we call the Tomez. She was the sweetest girl on the planet. And three is a day as long, half of uh, uh, Filipino, uh, some black, and some other, I don't know, but she took her hair out of the braids and it was, you know, out of the wig and the braids would fall and she had the most beautiful hair. And I would ask, why do you wear wigs? It was just so uh, outrageous to me that, because I didn't, I was the only I kept in the history of I kept who didn't wear a wig. And um, I thought, I said, oh boy, Gina's going to try to make me wear a wig. Uh-huh. And she never did because I had that kind of hair. I would only get in trouble if it got maybe a little frizzy or bushy. And uh, we would get fined if we didn't shake our hair enough. You, you know how to Really? Did? <laughs> you know, all of that. Uh-huh. We had to copy what she did, and we get a price, <laughs> and we get a five dollar fine if we didn't shake our hair enough and didn't uh, and had run to the stocking or missed a step on you know. And I think that was Ike's way of taking his money back once he gave it to me. Uh, yeah, so he could he could save money by telling you at the end of the week. You got a fine for the stocking. That's not a fine for the. And I would try to get all the steps right and. Say, oh, he turned around. That's good. He didn't see me miss that step. Oh, Student, we got off stage. This fool had eyes in the back of his head. He's I saw that. Uh, <laughs> uh, you see that movie when uh, when uh, Angela Bassett and they. Yes, 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 <laughs> James Brown would do that too, huh? All right, you would. Right, bounds. <laughs> James Brown would do that too. Yeah, he was, he must have gotten it from Ike. Huh? Yeah. What? <laughs> no, you got to tell that story. Come on now. You can't just be that out there hanging. Well, I, I never worked with James Brown, but <laughs> his history and, and the movies. And the movie, all the movies have it in there. Yes, um, the $5 yeah. rule. <laughs> the $5 rule. And, uh, and can you imagine? We don't wear stockings like that anymore because, you know, the times have changed, but then... We had to hit the stage with stockings, and you know something's going to run because you saw those routines, right. you know. Yeah. Um, uh, and so my whole thing, I, I used to get fined. I'm sorry. Oh, this is classic. I love this. You know. <laughs> I think I used to get so fined. busted. <laughs> I'm so busted right now. I'm busted. Uh, we, I used, to, I think I used to get fined mostly for um, missing a, a step here and there because I would try to interject my own choreography because I, I thought I was good like that. Uh-huh. But you had to do what <laughs> Tina was doing, and so um, you know, who created the, who did the choreography for the I can't. Mostly the eye cats. Okay. And and if we had an idea, uh, Tina would start off. I don't, it, you know, in the beginning, they were mesmerized a little bit with uh, karate and, uh, you know, those moves that they do. Oh, like, my goodness, yes. You know, yes. Uh, all of that stuff. And so a lot of those moves came from martial arts. Oh. And, um, uh, of course, Tina, in later years, went off to become a Buddhist. And, you know, yes. that uh, energy and that chanting sort of saved her. From uh, the life, yes, like the life that you had. So. Right, right. Yeah. Now, tell me that I that I read this correctly. Did you sing with Tom Jones? I did. I did not sing. I think I did backup the same. I did backup for Tom Jones. The same, you know, some some, some, some records and things like that. But I got to tell you, one time, this is a story for everybody. Bradine, uh and I, it was, I maybe it was uh, Maurice and Marilyn, you know, when his brother was alive. We all said, let's go see Tom Jones. I forgot why, but maybe they gave us tickets or something like that. And we go, and uh, it's downtown, nice. Uh, I forgot why. Yeah. I forgot why. Why, would, why would you go see? Yeah, he's a good performer, but, you know, Renee wouldn't be into him. Yeah. But we did go, and all of a sudden, this guy comes out on stage and, uh, He's Verdine's color. He's got a big afro on. I said, who's this guy opening up for John Jones? And Verdine said, I don't know. Maybe some newcomer. And so, girl, do you know that was Tom Jones? 
And his skin was so dark and hair would be out. And he said, we didn't know until we started singing, what's new pussycat? <laughs> and we said, oh, oh my God, it's oh. kind of cool. I was looking at Brittany and I said, what in the world? He's black now. Yeah. So it was before, it was during his early times. Yeah. But, oh. but somewhere along the line, he transitioned into a flash person. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't, none of us could. And Maurice's mouth was open like a gate. All of us were going, that's Tom. We thought it was somebody to come and open the show for him. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. I, I think, I don't know now, I think he may be a little lighter now, but in that period, whatever period that was, he was going through, he was a black man. He was not dead. Okay. Somebody needed to go talk because he needed to do one of them ancestry. Because <laughs> Maybe. What do we know? Okay. What do we know? Okay. Um, now, that, okay, so I want to go back to the, the, the group, the female empowerment of the songs, because I know that your album, um, Take Me With You, that was, that epitomizes the, that whole album and the song, um, were straight late 60s, 70s. You had, because you guys performed Aquarius. Um, and all, you know, all of those songs and the son of a preacher, man. Oh my God. I love that. And I mean, that whole album, I was listening to it and that whole album just gave me that, you know, that funky little groove, you know, that you, that you don't have now. You know, we have all the, you know, dance and yeah. songs, you know, that just get you to go, hey, you know, with the hair and you want to do the, <laughs> I can't do songs, you know, the I can't movies. You want to do all the yeah. that. So, um, now when you, I want to take you back to um, when you when you guys were performing that, when you're hearing this music that's um, it was written for you guys. Mm-hmm. How did you? How did it make you feel? I want to hear. Well, you sound that. you sound like Redeem. This is the right. lecture that I got this morning regarding our songs. That the fact that we cranked out uh, maybe four or five. Albums uh, within, you know, we were together, I want to say from 1968 to that we were falling apart at the end of 72. And so maybe by 73, we were done, but uh, we were cranking out album after album after album. And I don't think that, uh, you know, we on a honeycomb page, I don't think we've even touched some of those songs that, that people try to post. We really? keep doing a lot of repeats, uh, but there are like, Five albums of mm-hmm. songs that, mm-hmm. that we did, and I believe Edna was such a, a great artist, and of course, all that gospel history behind her. And Darlene had kept the foot in her butt, and uh, she had to keep up with an older sister that was killing it. And uh, she would get in that studio, crank that out, and then boom, here we come with the vocals. Or sometimes we'd have the vocals uh, first, and then uh, to a scratch vocal, and then boom. Uh, you know, here we come in and she'd lay it down. And I mean, we were so, this is what we did for a living in LA. We were so fast. Right. And uh, these guys had to keep up with us and keep giving us great songs because we would get anything they threw at us. And they, you know, Lamont, bless his heart, he was used to doing uh, a lot of the Supremes where everything is in unison. Baby love, baby love, you know, ooh, and all the ooh's, everything is in unison. Or maybe two part harmony. He would try to pull that on us, and Carolyn, we get in the studio and go, hey, take the top. Okay, <laughs> take the top. <laughs> take the top. <laughs> we messed that song up so bad, their mouths would be open, like, what did they do? What are they doing in there? And we were just, we were singing that stuff down, like, you know, and it was usually the bottom, and I was in the middle, and uh, Carolyn Willis was the best soprano in the industry. There, were, there are producers that would change their sessions wait or postpone something if they couldn't get Carolyn on the top. She was just that dynamic. Uh-huh. Um, but uh, I don't know, in regards to your question, I forgot where we were, but <laughs> those songs were, you know, whatever they did, a lot of it, we didn't really, uh, it didn't, it didn't gel with us. It didn't resonate with us right away, but we were powerless to be able to change things the way we wanted to. Um, and which led to Carolyn quitting after a while because she had all this talent. She was a songwriter. She was a, an arranger. She did all of 
uh, Bill Withers' arrangements on his song. She was the, the session con. She was a contractor, and we were so stifled with Honeycomb. You know, it was men everywhere. Hi, and with Holland Dozier, men with the producers, um, uh, men with the, the engineers and the editors, and all of that stuff. That uh, one day she woke up and said, "I can't do this anymore. I feel like I'm in a box." I have a lot more to give. And then sure enough, when she quit the honeycombs and went on her own, she went straight to Seals and Crofts. She did all her arrangements. Yep. She, took her, she went to Melissa Manchester. She did all her stuff. So uh, Carol, Carolyn uh, wasn't having it anymore. She said, and on top of this, I'm tired all the time from touring and I'm broke. Mm-hmm. So this was a no brainer for her. And it's interesting mm-hmm. because all of, like I was saying, the words are so, you know, Power empowering for women, and then to hear that your you know everything was being taken from, you and that you were just told to get out there and just perform. Yes, that. But I mean, I knew that. I knew that going in. That's why I was the holdout. Those girls had to track me down. They they found me in Europe. <laughs> I was in England having a good old time, and they kept calling, going, "Come on, Shelly, you're ruining our chances to be in a group. We didn't even have a name yet." You, you ruining our chances. And I said, look, go ahead and sign. Take another girl. Take, take uh, Clyde King. Take uh, Alex Brown. Take, uh, what was the other one? Julia Waters. Take anybody. I don't want to sign with people that are like Barry Gordy because I know it's going to be down the line for us. Uh, you know, a lot of stealing and, uh, you know, do what I say. And and or you'll be replaced. We didn't own the honeycomb name. That was the first thing when when we uh, uh, disbanded. They got a, a, another honeycomb group mm-hmm. with the name Honeycomb. I mean, by then the company was disbanding and they were in trouble financially, and so that second honeycomb group never made it. But I mean, they could have, <laughs> you know, because when there's nothing we can do about it, they own the trademark, they owned everything. So Carolyn was right in. I maybe didn't have the courage that she did, or I wasn't as tired uh, mm-hmm. as she was, even though I knew all that stuff going in. Uh, she said, well, Shelly, you called it in the beginning. You didn't want to sign because of these reasons that she said, but I figured they would loosen up with us and change over time, but they're not going to. And uh, I need to get out this yeah. right. So, So Carolyn uh, left. I tried to find some other singers and, and you know it was chemistry was just gone by then so um uh you know by the time it fell apart i think i was a little relieved too right uh, edna of course had gotten with the producer so she yeah. went off to do a solo album with him mm-hmm. so you know that was that that's so um but i'm glad that you guys are back together yeah you know yeah. And like I said, you have this the history and the songs. And, you know, I'm still, I'm, I told you, I listen to these songs and I listen to the lyrics. And, you know, and I get to my spread. I told you, you ain't going to get this honey <laughs> ever again. You know, and it's like, so I'm, I'm you know, I love it. You guys, your, um, your marking history is um, there to stay, is here to stay, rather. And I'm so honored that you guys are here. So, I, but I do want to know what do you have because I know that there's some new music in the work. I know this much. Say so, it again. Like, I miss working because you guys are working on some new music. Oh, uh, well, we we were uh, fortunate to have a songwriter in our midst here, Kathy and her husband. Right. Uh, a, a song that I think that I, I said you didn't get to release it properly the way we should have, but uh, it's still, you know. It's still ready for release when the right time comes. Mm-hmm. And we're always going to be working on new music. We're working on uh, putting a show together. Things are a little sketchy because of COVID. So we're just going to, uh, uh, we're going to make sure that by the time we're hired, it's a safe situation. Mm-hmm. And uh, even in studios, you know, people are starting to do that again. But, uh, you know, it'll never be like it was. You're going to get... Uh, uh, temperature chest tested. Right. Uh, some some want you to come in with a COVID vaccine card. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody has different rules, but we're gonna abide by all of them and work our way back to the stage again. So I want to see you guys. I know that much. Thank I you. See you guys. 
So wherever you're at, I'm coming. And if thank you to Atlanta, I'm definitely gonna be there. <laughs> is that is that where you are? Yeah, I'm in Atlanta. I'm in Alpharetta. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at. So it, it's so okay. uh, you know the music is coming back. Thank God. Thank God. You sound like Redeem. He's like yeah. he's like you. You girls just don't know how fortunate. Uh, in a way, you have you guys have the real music. You that's have. He said, if you want, you have two and a half hours of, of a show. That's your right. own music that's if you right. want to. That's it was, right. It's just that we you know we like other we like other people's stuff. So we I don't know if we could do you know an hour and a half of just honeycomb without somebody else, but uh, but we could. Yes, you could. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait a minute. Yes, you can. My list of songs that you guys have, but I told you I'm going to be in the. You know, I'm going to be the one standing up with the with the lighter lit going the lighter. The lighter. Well, not the lighter. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we do, we do, we do a cell phone light now. You know, oh, yeah, right. I'm keeping it all school. I have a lighter, Miss Shelly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. And you know what is it? Girl, it ain't easy. Oh, that one. Oh, that one gets me going. Let me just repeat that. Girl, it ain't easy. Girls, it's, it ain't easy. A woman's work is never done. It never stops. We work our fingers to the bone. Our best is never good enough. You know, that's my favorite song, by the uh-huh. way. Out of everything that we ever recorded, yeah. that's my favorite song. Yeah, because it's telling the truth. You, you, it's the truth. We are never, and you know, and I'm, I'm looking at, you know, we got beauty queens, we got dancers, orchestra, I mean, and still somebody will say that is never enough. <laughs> never enough. <laughs> And you feel like you are not good enough. And I'm like, the world, we are the prize. Women are the prize. Yeah. I, I don't know. This is 2021. Women are are taking a stand. And- That's right. And it's because of lyrics like that to remind. And this is why I want to keep, I have this platform to remind women. You got to go. You, you need to listen. Don't, don't get fooled by the music and the beat. I want you to hear the lyrics, <laughs> and I want you to hear your work. You you don't have to put up with some of this stuff. And did, you, did you get a chance to hear um, uh, Kathy's empowerment song? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Isn't yes, it great. Ma'am. It's great, right, ma'am? And that's what I'm saying. I mean, this is something that we, women we need to hear this. We need to constantly hear this. And these, and these songs were written by men, so they know. You know, and I'm not. They know. <laughs> they, they know, and, and they know. still know. And this is these, these lyrics are relevant now. So I need to. That's why I'm keeping it OG with the lighter. So <laughs> and here, here. <laughs> so I see you guys. Back. That's right. We go and we go pour some out for the homies. All and right, pour some out for the homies. There it is. Where's your, where's your where's your glass? There it is. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. And on that note, where are your husbands? Because I want to ask them a question. Oh well, uh, Bradine is actually in a meeting uh, outside of the house, which he re- rarely does. But uh, he's producing um, the girl on Tools. Her name is M J Rodriguez. She uh-huh. is the the um, uh, is, is a transsexual. Am I saying that right? She's the star of Pooh's. It's on Netflix or one of those shows. And um, there is, I watched that. That's one of my. Hey. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Wait a minute. And the, the voguing and all of that. Right? Well, he's he's been producing her for the last three years or so, uh, but they're ready to do her video. So I don't know if you remember the guy, uh, director Rashidi. That's all I can remember his first name, Rashidi Natiri, something like that. He's very good. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Okay. Rashidi. Yes, I know who you're talking about. I know. He's at a, he's at a luncheon right now with Rashidi. Wait, but I can answer on his behalf. Yes. Uh, however, I however, want, he's I want your husband to, to um, understand, and I want them to know, I want them to answer this question. Do they realize that they are married to superstars, to legends? Oh. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> they know. Okay. They know, huh? They know. I think Rom's outside. He decided to go out and and, uh, and work outside in the garden and stuff. But um, 
I don't know. He always says, oh, I like your nose. Oh, I can't even see glass. And I'm like, no, me. I still love being blessed. So, oh. yeah, we know. We're, you know, good together is good together. You know it's good. And you just don't want it to end. So, we know. Right. Okay. Yes. What about John? Oh well, John is not feeling well. He has he's been struggling with vertigo for the last night. Oh, okay. No, no, I meant I meant. What does he feel about you? I mean, oh. that's what I was saying. You know, we see the value in each other. Definitely, he's my king, and I'm his queen. Oh, no, no, now. Come on. Now. Wait, and and Bradine is just straight terrified. So uh, he knows he, he knows what he's dealing with over here. Leo, okay. No, no. <laughs> he's, he's like uh, the, the best answer in this house is yes, dear. <laughs> happy life, happy, happy wife, happy life. <laughs> Because I have to say this, you know, before COVID, we were getting together, you know, at least once a week to rehearse and, you know, chop it up and have salad. You make the best salads and have the best wine. And so, you know, I, I always admire how you guys love each other and how you look at each other and how you care for him and how he cares for you. You okay, honey? You all right, babe? You all okay? <laughs> Then I show like, you okay? You need anything? You know? And then no, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Am I in trouble? <laughs> I say, Am I trouble? Did I do anything? <laughs> <laughs> and his vitamins right there, all his stuff. And I'm like, dude, why are you taking so many vitamins? He stays super healthy. And I'm like, I don't want to be like you when I grow up. All the way up and chili make sure that he is on the ball. That's right. I love, I love you guys together. Thank you. So very true. Thank you. Very, very true. Thank you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, hey, hey. So, the answer to the climb. I know, right? It's the answer. Okay. Well, ladies, mm-hmm. I'm telling you, this is for this from this fan girl to each one of you. It has been such an honor to speak with you and just have this girl time. Thank you. Let you know how much I admire each and every one of you, and I'm so, so happy to share um, this earth with you guys. I want you to know. Ooh, thank you. Thank you. Um, I I feel I feel so blessed uh, to to be around. I mean, how are you? I mean, how are you going to get that? I mean, I mean, they're both a triple triple threat, right? Right. right? In some cases, quadruple threat. You have everything. I mean, it's from my when I when I pray to God, just please send me someone who's you know I had a long list: talented, pretty, (laughs) nice, spiritual. (laughs) I mean, it was answered. It was just answered. So you know, we 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 give thanks to God that we answered each other's you know prayer in a way. Uh, you know I got my tissue. Wait a minute. You know I got my tissue, and I'm starting to get ready for a cry. I definitely believe it was kismet because so many parallel situations that, yeah. that, that crisscross. That it's like we, we're supposed to be here. We're supposed to come together, and when we get together, the reaction that we get from people. Right. Oh yeah. man. I mean, on the street, right? Having dinner. I mean, people just uh, assume that we're somebody, right? <laughs> Who are you girls? <laughs> you know? And then, and then, of course, we get a lot on our honeycomb page. I, I know we're winding down now. It's girl, it's two thirty, almost 2.30. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Well, where, uh, but we get a lot on the, on, the, on the page that, you know, there would be no Destiny's Child. That's with, right. Girls, they, they they were the originals, uh, and they are keeping the legacy going with the same type of excellence. So I'm I'm really um, I'm really happy and relieved when I see comments like that on the page that uh, that we have you know a level of excellence, right? And that's and that's people coming and that that's coming from people's heart. You just don't know, and that's what a lot of people um um a lot of Artists 
you need to understand how you impact people who listen to your music. All of the, you know, like you're telling the backstory, but on the flip side of that, how you impact people's lives. I mean, come on. You've got to feel that love. I want each and every one of you to feel the love that you've given to us. You've given to me. I told you when I sing, if I'm going through a breakup with a guy and all I got to do is put on one of these songs and, and I'm feeling all right, you know, come on now. <laughs> and I want, you know, this is something, so it's my opportunity to tell you how much you mean to me. And this is when I start crying because it's like, I'm sitting here and I'm looking at each one of you on this, on this, on the computer. And I'm like, and there's me who is on, you know, I, you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm I'm fangirling right now because I'm like, I listen to your music. I listen to, you know, and I'm sitting here having this girl talk with you guys. And it's just, if the Lord were to take me, I would be all right because I've had this moment. You know that? Thank you. I really, I mean that with everything inside of me. And I'm telling you, the tears are just coming. And I, it just, it means, it means so much to me. And I think. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Brad. Thank you for having us. This has been fun. Well, we don't we don't get to hear about each other's lives until we do candid interviews like this. <laughs> wait, wait. We got uh, 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 Kathy we had a group that used to rehearse in an empty swimming pool. Um, but I was blown away when I heard that one. <laughs> Switch jobs once with the sounds of the supremes. Mm-hmm. Uh, one left, the other one came, and they switched jobs, picked the other job, and waste and just, just yeah. stuck. Right. And, and so our lives have been paralleled and right. Mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. And you know what I was saying earlier, and I have the worst stage fright when it's performing, but I'm always on stage. I'm always there, and I feel you know I, I was I grew up surrounded by so many artists um, who are legends. You know, and and it, I'm, I'm, you know, and I just hear that, and you know, when I share stories with my son, and I tell him, you know, like, oh my God, you know, when I was this age, you know, and I worked with these people, and but to be to to not want to be in the forefront, but I was always there, you know. So it it it's just it's amazing, and so we are all connected somehow. Um, you know, like I said, um, Edna was just, you know, I was just, it was me and Lisa's, um, Lisa Stone, Rose Stone's daughter, Lisa. And we were the youngest ones in the group, in the choir. And Edna was always so, so kind to me. So, so kind to me. And, and when I, when I became an adult and I realized that she was this legend, and I'm like, Edna? I had no idea. And I hate that I did not get a chance to interview it because I have this list, you know, like I told you, the list of people that I wanted to interview. That's your bucket list. Yes, yes. And so I am making sure that I get to everyone that I possibly can. Um, and I don't want to wait anymore. And I told that I told you that, Michelle. I go, I don't um, you know, tomorrow's not promised. So I'm going to make sure. I interview everyone and let them and, and have this this moment with them, you know. So, um, gosh, gosh darn it, you guys have just made me so happy. You really, thank you, thank you, <laughs> really have. And again, it's such an honor, and I love each and every one of you. Just continue to be the 
bright light that you are. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Oh my God. Thank you guys so much. Bye bye. Okay. I'm signing out. Bye you guys. Thank you. Bye. 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 B